of our Teleic Tips series. In this video, we'll be discussing different methods to bind your hybrid mobile app data built in App Builder. This video will cover the online scenarios and an upcoming video will cover the offline ones. Let's start by creating a new workspace under my Teleic platform account. Let's call it Online Data Binding Workspace and then click on the Create button. Now that my workspace is ready, I'm going to switch into App Builder Windows client version and start by creating a new Kindle UI blank project under this workspace. Let's call it Online Data Binding App and then click on the Create button. Now that my project is ready, I'm going to go into the index.html and start by adding a new Kindle UI list view. Now let's start with the first solution, online via Teleric Backend Services. For this one, back into my Teleric platform, if I refresh my browser, you can see that the online app will appear. And now I'm going to start by creating a new backend service project. Let's call it Online Data Binding Backend Service, and then click on the Create button. Now under Types, I'm going to start by creating a new content type. Let's call it Products Backend Service and add one field called Product Name of Type Text. I'll be adding three different items into this Product Backend Service type. Next, under Getting Started Downloads, choose Backend Services hybrid and web and start by downloading the javascript sdk for hybrid mobile app now let's go to the zip file directory and extract it locally back to my app builder project where i can start by adding a new folder let's call it min for mini file and then add an existing file which is everlife.all.min.js that we just added and now under index.html, I will add a reference to this JavaScript file that I just added. And now we have to bind our Kindle UI list view to our backend service data source. For this one, back to the backend service downloads page, at the bottom, we've got the documentation link where we'll be looking for the Kindle UI data source. And then from here, I'll be copying the code and paste it into my index.html as online method one. In order to get my API key, I'm going to go back into my Teleric platform account, specifically to my online data binding workspace, online data binding backend service, get the API key, copy it, and then paste it into my index.html. Now I will rename the data source to backend service data source, change the type name to products backend service, add the field uh, product name to the schema, and then bind my Kindle UI list view to this backend service data source. Add a new template. And this template will display only the product name. right click format my code and now I'm ready to run it in my simulator and as you can see the three items are getting displayed properly back to my backend service under the product backend service type I'm gonna add a new item let's call it backend service prod4 and now back to my simulator if I click on the refresh button you can see that the product 4 has been displayed as well now let's move to the second solution, online via Teleric backend service data link. Back to my online data binding backend service project, under types, I'm going to create a new type, but this time it's from a data connector, set up a new data link server, let's download the installation file 
locally into my machine. In the meantime, let's go and check the installation instructions. Under setting up data link server, we're going to follow the instructions step by step. Starting by IAS, adding a new site. Let's call it data link on port number 9090, host name star for all. I don't want it to start immediately and then change the physical path to see websites data link and then click on the OK button. Select the newly created website data link and then at the right hand side import application, browse to the directory of the zip file that we just downloaded and then click on next to get to the end of this wizard. Now we are ready to start this website. Let's go ahead and start it. Whenever the website is up and running, I can browse to it on port 9090 and you should get the same result OK has errors false. Back to the backend service where I will start by creating my data connector. Let's give it a name Northwind Connector. Choose your database type. In my case, it's SQL, so I'm going to leave it. And then the data link server URL, which is the one to the site that we just created on port 9090. Then download the authentication key locally to your machine. As per the instructions, copy this file and paste it under the keys folder under the data link website. Now let's enter my connection string to my database, which is based on my server, my database name, my user ID and my password. I can test it by clicking on the test button. Now I'm going to go into my SQL Server Management Studio where I can show you the data under the products table under the Northwind database. Back to my data connector where the test connection succeeded, click save and then under the source type it's going to load all of the available tables from my database in a very smart way. For this demo I'm going to choose the products table. And then from the fields, I'm going to choose the product name column only. Click Save. As you can see, it's loading all of my data from this table, the 4078 items. If I go back to my database, I can confirm that this is the same number. Back to App Builder now, I'm going to start by commenting the code behind my online method 1, copy it, and then paste it as online method 2 with a minor change which is the type name is products. Run it in the simulator and as you can see the first value is chai latte. Now if I go back into my database and then update the product table and set the product name to chai instead of chai latte for product id equal 1, run it. If I go back into my backend service and refresh you can see that it has been changed to chai as well as in the simulator if I click on refresh it will display chai without having to make any change to my application itself. By that, we're ready to move to the third method, online via remote web API. For this method, let's switch into Visual Studio and start by creating a new project. File new project. Under web, we'll choose ASP.NET web application, change the name to products web API, click the web API empty as a template, now that my project is ready, I can go ahead and add a new model, change the name of the class to product.cs, now that the class is ready, I'm going to add two fields, the ID as an integer and a product name as a string. Now let's add a new controller, it's going to be an empty one, let's call it product controller add a reference to the model's namespace and then from here I will create a new array of type product called products that will consist of three objects of type product. Let's create a get products function that will return all of these products. 
Now that you're ready, let's build our solution and make sure that it will build successfully. Let's go back to IS and start by creating a new site. Let's call it Products Web API. The physical path will be our project. The port can be 1999 or any. Host name star and then click on the OK. Let's try to browse to this website and as you can see it's returning the three products items in a JSON format. Back to App Builder, command the code behind the online method 2 and start my online method 3 by declaring a new web API data source which is akin to data source that will have my web API as a URL pointing to the products and the data type will be JSON. Now let's bind it into my Kindle UI list view. Run it in a simulator and as you can see it's displaying the three products. Back into my Visual Studio and make a change at the server side by adding a new item. Let's say Web API Prod 4. Rebuild my solution. Refresh the browser to make sure that it's displaying the new one. And now if I refresh my simulator, you can see that it's displaying the fourth item without having to make any change to my application itself. As a summary, we learned in this video three different methods for online data binding where you can automatically push changes into your end user device application without having to make any change to the application itself. Thanks for watching another video of